Hello and welcome to the first video in what's going to be a series of videos going over how you can build a somewhat sophisticated 2D game in the SFML graphics library for C++11 and above. Um, so yeah, th in this first tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can implement a text box and a button in SFML because SFML does not have that by default, and for most games, you're going to want to receive some sort of typing input, and definitely want to have button click events and things like that uh, in your game. And uh, so that, that's one reason a lot of people don't use SFML for game development is because you have to make these things yourself. So in a way to maybe encourage some people to start using SFML, I'll show you. You know, it's not it's not that difficult. I mean, it's a little annoying that you have to go through it, but uh, I'll. I'll show you how to do it. So we're going to start with the text box class, all right? And here I'm just going to create a header file here, and we're just going to call this text box, all right? And then we're going to I'm just going to do it all in the header file just because I like to keep it in one area. So we're going to call this. Oops. For some reason my there we go. So this is going to be our text box class. And oops, I have my German keyboard on by accident. So we have a text box class, and then we have our public modifiers, and then our private modifiers. So before we do this, we also have to include our SML graphics library and our IO stream in case we want to do some debugging here. And uh, so here we can begin. So the first object, basically, basically what the text box is going to end up being is it's going to end up being just an SF text object called, which we're just going to call text box here. And, um, and yeah, I'll, I'll kind of explain what's going on as it's happening. But uh, along with the SF text box, we also need to do an include of S streams here. We need to include a few input and output streams. Um, that's what's going to uh, basically allow us to dynamically edit the text. So we're going to do a standard output string stream. And this is going to be our text. Um, and then we're also going to have um, we're going to have two booleans here. We're going to have a boolean for um, is selected. So is the user selecting the text box? We want the user to be able to either select the text box or not select the text box. And then we're also going to have a limit. So if the um, text box has a limit. And we're going to set both these to false by default here. And then the last thing we want to have is we just want to have our int called limit. Alright, so these are all the private modifiers that we're going to have for the text box class. And then we're going to actually do the, uh, we're going to do some of the public stuff. So we'll do our constructor um, first. And in our constructor, um, let me think here. What are we going to do? So for our constructor, what we're going to do is we're going to allow the user to, well, first we'll have a default constructor. But then we'll also have a, we'll overload it as well. So I'll just move this over here. So then what we're going to do, we're going to allow the user to set the text, the character size, and we're going to allow the user to set the um, color, and we're going to allow the user to set the initial selected state of the text box. So whether or not the text box is selected upon creation, or whether or not you have to select the text box um, first, or, or if it's deselected upon creation. So what we're going to say is we're going to set our text box dot set our character size is going to be the size. We're going to set text box dot set color. Nope, it's not that. Set color is going to be the color, and then we're just also going to set is selected is equal to cell, just like that. All right, and so that, that's all we're going to do for now. We're going to come back. We're going to modify this a little bit later, but um, before we do that, we're going to we're going to do some other things. So we're actually we're going to go back down to our private modifiers and we're going to create a little void method. This is going to allow us to get um, input from the user because we want to basically all text box does is it takes whatever the user is typing on the keyboard and it displays it to the screen. So um, Basically, how we're going to do that is we're going to do a void. This is a private void because this is only going to be used within the um, within the text box class. So we're going to implement it a little bit more up here. But for now, we're just going to start here. So I'm just going to call this input logic, and all it's going to do is it's just going to take an integer, and this is just going to be the character typed because how SFML works is they return a Unicode value of the character typed, and um, 
and then we just want to excuse it, or they return the ASCII value of the character type, and we just kind of want to display that on the screen. So, actually, before we do that, we need to define a few things. So, I'm going to define a few keys. So, the first key that we need to define is the delete key, because when the user presses the delete key, if you didn't, like, have a special case for the delete key, when the user presses the delete key, it would just try to display a Unicode value for the delete key, so it would end up just displaying an empty square. But obviously we know that if a user is pressing the delete key, then obviously they want to delete something. So we have to add in some logic to allow that to happen, so we have to know what the delete key is, and the value for the delete key is 8. Um, but then we also need two other values for keys, and these are going to be the keys that select and deselect the um, the text box. So you can really set these to whatever you want. The ones I typically do are the enter key, which is a value of 13, and then I also like to do the escape key, which has a value of 27, I believe. Yes, 27. So we have the escape key and the delete key, enter key. Okay, so I believe that's all the keys that we need for this. So then we can go back down to our input logic here, and we can begin to actually... Um, type some stuff out. So um, what this is going to do is we're going to say if the character typed is not equal to the delete key and the character typed is not equal to the enter key and the character typed is not equal to the escape key. So if it's if the character that's being typed is not equal to any of our special cases, then all we're going to do is we're just going to append our little, this is how you write to a string stream object, in case you don't know, as you do it the same way that you see something out. Uh, then we're just going to do a static cast to a character of our character typed here, just like that. And that's that's all we're going to do for that. However, if the character typed is equal to the delete key, then what we're going to do is, um, well, the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that there is actually something there to delete. So we have to first do a check if the uh, text.str, which this is how you get the actual string value of a, uh, of a string stream, dot length is greater than zero. So if there's actually text there to delete, because if you try to delete something that's not there, then you know C++ is not going to like that. Uh, so then we're actually going to create a method, a, another private method to delete uh, the last character. Um, so I'm just going to do that down here, and we're just going to it, it'll be a um, it'll be a quick little method. Uh, I'll just call this void delete last character, and we're not going to take in any parameters, I believe. And all this is going to do, this is going to create a, um, a string. We'll just call this t for text, and that's going to be equal to the text, oops, dot str, just like that. And then we're going to create a, another string called new t, and we'll set that equal to null by default. And then all we're going to do, we're just going to do a little for loop, for int i equal to zero, while i is less than t dot length minus one. I plus plus. So we're just going to run the length of the um, of the text, but we're just going to be uh, subtracting one from it. So that way, it's going to copy every value of t into new t, um, except for the last variable. So plus equals t i just like that. Uh, then the last thing we want to do is we want to say text.str. We want to just clear text before we want to see in the new t or else it'll just keep adding on instead of actually like deleting the last key. What this will do is it'll keep what we already have typed and then it will append the full word again except with the last character deleted and that's obviously not what we want so we have to clear it before we um, before we you know, include that in our string stream object there. So then, once this is done, uh, that's, I believe that's all we need. Oh, wait, then we need to do one more thing. Then we need to do um, textbox.setString, and this is going to be text.str, just like that. Uh, okay, so after all that's done, then we could just go ahead and then when they hit the delete key, what we just want to do is we want to say delete the last character, just like that. And then I think 
that is it for this. Um, oh wait, there's one more thing that we want to do in here, and that is um, is we just want to say textbox dot set string, and we're going to set this to text dot str. But we're also going to include a little um, underscore here. And what this underscore is going to do is this is going to kind of keep track of where we are in the text box. So where so the underscore is just going to always be appended to the end of the text box. So um, so that way the user knows first of all that the text box is being selected and that they are in that specific location um, where they're typing. So these are the two private modifier or two private functions that we need. Uh, for this class and then we're going to go ahead we're going to implement them in our public member functions here and uh, I'm trying to think which one I want to do first I guess actually before we actually implement it we probably want to just do a few other things uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a function that sets the font because one of the biggest problems that people run into when dealing with SFML classes that contain text is um, getting text to actually show up because there are a lot of access violations that run up if you don't create a font outside of the class and then pass it by reference into it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to create a void called set font. It's going to take in an SF font that we pat that we get by reference. So we're getting the actual font that's created outside of the class, and then we're just going to say textbox dot set font to that font, just like that. And so that will fix any access violation errors that you may run into. Then we're just going to do another basic uh, set position, which will take in an SF vector to float. Call pause. We'll do text box. Whoops. Oops. Hold on. I messed that up. And then we'll say text box dot set position to that position. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, we'll also do uh, set limit which will be, uh, well, we're actually, we're going to overload this function, so that way they can turn it on or off. So we're going to do bool, true or false, uh, and then we'll just do has limit is equal to true or false, and then we'll do another set limit where it'll take in a boolean for true or false, and then also take an integer for the limit. So this way we'll do has limit is equal to true or false, and then we'll also say that the limit is equal to whatever is passed in for limit there, just like that. And then um, we also want to do another setter for set selected so this will just be another bool for cell and um, here that we actually have to do something kind of kind of special here we have to uh, because when the user is selecting the text box we want to kind of let them know that they're selecting the text box and how we decide that we're going to do that is down here with the little underscore and so we have to make sure that when the text box is selected it has the underscore and when it's not selected then it does not have the underscore so um, first we'll do is selected is equal to cell that's the first thing we'll just get that out of the way and then we're going to say if it's not selected so if what they just passed in is, hey, I don't want this text box to be selected, then we actually, we can't just delete the last character, uh, just because I, I tried doing that and I ran into a bunch of errors, and uh, I really won't go into explain why we can't do that, but we just can't. We, we just kind of have to like kind of copy what we did down here, and we just have to modify it a little bit. So we can take this, and we're just going to put that in there. And um, basically what this is going to do is um so we'll say text box dot set string and we're gonna set that to the new text that goes in there. Okay. Yeah, just like that. I think I think that's what we want to do. Could be wrong, but I guess we'll find out. Um, then we also want to do a um, a string object that will get the text. So this is just going to return the text dot str here. So we want to be able to, whatever the user types in, we want to be able to read what it is that they're typing in. Uh, then we also need to do another, you know, basic standard thing that we do for all SFML classes, which we need to have a draw to function, and we need to take in a reference window, or a render window by reference, and then we just need to do the window dot draw the text box here. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to draw the text box to the window, 
and uh, and so yeah so I believe that that's all that we need that's like all of our like setup stuff oh and then also I was gonna do something in the constructor as well so that way when um, when they uh, when they create it uh, so we'll say if um, what, what do we want to say if select if selected then we'll set textbox dot set string is just going to be the underscore by default else we'll say textbox.setString will just be nothing by default. Okay. And so yeah, so that, that that just takes care of like how we want to track placement in the uh in the text box. And then so finally now we can actually get into um implementing our little uh you know typing logic here. And um I just call this void uh typed on um I don't think we need any parameters for this. Um, oh no, sorry, we do. We need one parameter, and this is going to take an SF event, and this is going to be called our input. And uh, basically, we're we're going to be putting this obviously um, here, like we're going to be getting this event that we create up here, and we're going to be putting it in here so that way uh, we can you know actually run this thing in game rather than just having it as like a little class outside of it. Uh, so this is how we get the actual reference, and uh, and we actually we don't need to pass this by reference because the input it doesn't actually matter if it's like I guess and you know what we could pass it by reference just to save memory but it's so negligent it doesn't really matter uh, you can pass it by reference I think if you want I've never tried it I just don't want to mess anything up but anyways so um, yeah so we're gonna say if the um, if the text box is being selected, because we want to make sure that it's only typing on the text box if the user wants to type it on the text box. If the user is not selecting the text box, then they probably don't want to be typing on the text box. Uh, so if the text box is selected, then we're just going to do int char typed, and just so we can get this, it's going to be input dot, uh, what is it? Input dot text dot unicode. Okay, so this is just going to get the value of the character that's being typed. And uh, we we just want to we only want to allow normal inputs, so we're just going to say if the character typed is uh, less than 128. So this is just going to allow all numbers and letters and slashes and dots and no, nothing nothing that would like crash the program. Basically, is uh, that's what we're going to be allowing. And uh, the first thing we want to do is once we once we make sure that it's a valid character being typed, we want to check if it has if the character has a um, a limit basically because if there's a character limit on the text box because some games like you want to because basically how this text box is going to work it's not going to be like traditional text boxes where you um you know it's like a finite box and then like you type it and it can like scroll and you can like view the whole text i think like uh, mo in fact most games don't work like that that's pretty much exclusive to you know things like microsoft based apps but uh, how this is going to work is this is going to work like a lot more like how actual game text box work and basically it's just going to be on a place on a screen and when you type the letters up here and uh, it's a transparent background and all that and you can theoretically type infinite letters but that's that's why we're including the whole limit thing is because most games have a character limit so your name can only be this long because obviously you don't want to have a game with somewhat like a thousand characters because that will you know make the game run slower especially if you're drawing that name to a screen every uh, like 10 sec every like second so so yeah so that's the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to check if it has a limit. So if it does have a limit, then we want to make sure that the, uh, the user is staying within that limit. So we're only going to call this little input logic function, you know, this is the function, once again, that uh, draws the text to the screen. So we're only going to call this if it's within the bounds of the limit. So if text.str um, dot length is less than or equal to the limit. So if it's less than or equal to the limit, then what we want to say is we want to do input logic, uh, and we just want to pass in the character typed, just like that. And uh, and so yeah, that's all we have to do for the, uh, the li actually no, that's not all we have to do for the limit, because the thing is, if we just left it at this, as soon as the user reached the limit, then they would no longer have access to this function here. But the thing is, this function does not only allow for uh, typing characters, it also allows for deleting characters. So they wouldn't actually be able to delete characters if, um, you know, if this was the case, if this is all we had. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to copy this, and we're just going to say 
else if so if they do go past the limit and the um what is char typed and the key that they're typing is the delete key then we want to this is why i made this a separate function is so we can call it again uh we want to run this uh void here so we want to still allow them to delete characters if that's you know what they want to do uh because obviously, you know, we, we have to give them a chance. Like, if they're trying to go over the limit, we, we want to give them a chance to at least, like, delete and think of a different name or something like that. Uh, so that's why we have to include that in there. And then, of course, um, you know, if no limit exists, then we just want to uh, do this. So, uh, so, yeah, I believe that that's all that we need to do for this class. Uh, so yeah, let's go try to implement it. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going go into our main class, and uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this, but this is just a uh, basic uh, SFML template that I uh, I created a while back. I'll leave this in the uh, description of the video. I'll also leave a link to uh, like how you can set up SFML and all that. And this is working in Win in Visual Studio 2017. I believe it should be working in 2019 as well. I haven't tried it in that, but um, it's working in 2017. And basically, all this does is this just creates a blank window just like that that has a black background and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to include my textbox.h header file here and then I'm going to create a textbox variable call this textbox1. And uh, what are my parameters again? I said for the parameters I want the size, color, and selected state. So the size, uh, the character size, I'm going to make that 15. The color, we'll just make it uh, white. And then I do want it to be selected by default. Just so we, actually, no, I don't want it to be, because I want, I want to test out the, um, the uh, selection, see if we can select and deselect it. Um, so yeah, so I don't want it to be selected by default. And uh, and then down here, I'm just going to do uh, textbox one dot draw to the window, just like that. Uh, actually, you know, let's let's do it selected by default, just so we can see if it's actually being drawn. So, oh wait, hold on, it's probably not going to draw because I did not, uh, yeah, I did not set a position and I did not set a font for it either. Uh, so uh, double shame on me. Actually, I think in this project file, I already have a font in here. Yeah. Uh, so I have the Arial font already in here, and actually, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, one way that you can just call your font without having to do the entire directory is to check where your working directory is. So if you right-click on this thing here, if it'll, uh, right-click and not crash my, uh, thing, oh, it looks like it's going to crash my thing. Excuse me. But, um, basically, when this thing's done crashing, uh, we're going to right click on here, we're going to go into our properties, and then we're just going to look to see where our working directory is. And then, wherever our working directory is, if we just put files in that working directory, we can just call the files by name, and we don't have to put the whole, um, you know, like... Uh, C C drive backslash documents backslash users or whatever. Um, so yeah, we go into debugging actually, and then we look for our working directory, and then you just want to see where that is. So this path right here, that is your working directory. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is you just want to open up a um, thing and just go. So whatever you put in here, you could just call by name. And so I already have, how you get this font, by the way, is just like type in like uh, the name of the font, Arial, and then you could just like uh, load this open and then it'll take you to a window that has all your fonts and stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to move this into here. And uh, and so yeah, so I just have my Arial font in there because we need to load the font in, remember. And uh, so yeah. So what we need to do is we need to create an SF font. I'll just call this Arial. And I just want to say Arial.load from file Arial.ttf because true something. Actually, is it TF? No, it's TTF, yeah. Uh, so yeah, true text font, something like that. That's the name of the file. Uh, so then what, all we want to do then is we want to say textbox1.set font to Arial. And then we want to say textbox1.set um, position. We're going to set the position how about to 100 by 100. So now, if I did that right, 
we should be able to run this and then we should see that there, there you go we see the little underscore right there because it is selected now obviously if I type nothing's gonna happen because we haven't set up any of we haven't basically hooked up any of our uh, you know functions that actually deal with receiving user input so let's go ahead and do that so um, the function that's going to receive user input I believe we want to do it here we're gonna do a case for um, so we want to do a case for SF event text entered. This is, this is very helpful that this case is here by default. Uh, and I did this outside of the switch statement because I'm stupid. There we go. So when the t when text is entered, then all we want to say is we want to say textbox1 dot typed on, and then we want to take in event as our, this is this event by the way. I know I, na I should name it something else, but it's not, it's not the SF event, it's the variable name that we're taking in. So that's very important. To note. So, uh, so once we do that, then if I run this, then if I type, we see that there we go. And now I can do the backspace and the characters delete. I can type hello there. How are, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm very bad at typing. Like hello there. How are you today? And you see, I can do all those characters. I can do numbers. I can do anything like that. And but the thing is, you know, I can go off this. I can go way off the screen. I can just keep typing, and I can go way off the screen. But also, our delete key works as well, as you can see. And uh, and so yeah, everything seems to be working with that. And if I try to delete again when there's no text there, we don't run into an out of bounds error because it's not letting us delete when there's nothing to delete. So everything is working there. Um, what we just want to implement really quickly is we want to implement something that allows us to select and deselect the text box. So I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to set certain keys to do that. So uh, like I said in here I did the, um, remember we did the enter and escape key. I'm going to do the enter key for select and then the escape key for deselect. So I'm going to say if SF keyboard is key pressed, SF keyboard, uh, it's called return, the enter key is for uh, in SFML. Uh, so if the return key is pressed, then I want to say textbox one dot set selected to um, to true, and then else if SF keyboard is key pressed, SF keyboard escape, then I want to say textbox one dot set selected to false just like that and then also up here I just want to go ahead and I want to make sure that it is false by default so that way we're not selecting it so now when I run this uh, I shouldn't I'm not able to type anything but then when I hit the enter key we see our thing pops up and I can type again and then when I hit the escape key it um, for some reason it deleted two keys although I think I know why it did that um, I want to say it did that because yeah, I think I think we actually just want to set this to the length. I don't think we actually want to subtract one from that. I'm not sure why it does that, but I think I remember running into that before. So now if I hit enter and I type in a bunch of stuff and I hit delete, there we go. Okay, yeah. So you just you just want to run this uh, this for loop until the length. I think that's one of the reasons that you can't just call this function again. Um, but yeah. So you just want to run it until the length and not the length minus one, and then that will get rid of that problem there. Oh, and then the last thing that we want to try out is let's just uh, try out a limit. So um, text box dot set limit. We'll just set that to true, and we'll set that to um, ten. And actually, I think there's another weird thing with limits as well. Uh, let me see if I type in this. So now if I hit enter and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it lets, it lets me do 11, actually. So I think um, when we're setting the limit, we just want to set the limit to whatever they type in, minus 1. And now, and again, I'm not, and once again, I'm not exactly sure why it does. Actually, you know, I do know why it does that. Never mind. Uh, the reason it does that is because here we're saying it has to be, um, it's less than, maybe if, if I change this to less than or equal, or greater than or equal to, let me see. Actually, wait, no, no, actually, actually, no, that doesn't explain it, because this, it's saying less than or equal to the limit, yeah, it should be doing that, but, um, so yeah, just, just, just subtract one here, and then, uh, and then we should be good, 
with that. So yeah, so then I should do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I can't type anything else after that. But I can still delete keys afterwards, because that was, that was like one of the things that we wanted to make sure we could do, is that we can delete keys. And then I can deselect it, and I can't type anything. And so yeah, everything with our text box seems to be working all well. And so yeah, that's how you make a text box in SFML. Uh, then the next thing that I said we are going to make is the button. So let's go ahead and do that. So the button, let's go ahead, we're going to make another header file for this. And we're just going to call this button, uh, we're going to call this uh, class for button. And then, uh, whoops, we're going to have our public and our private modifiers here. And then we're also, we're just going to include, um, we don't need the stream class for this. We just, I believe we just need these two things here. Okay, so th what the button is actually going to be is the button is going to be a rectangle shape uh, called button, and then um, I can't remember if I yeah okay then we also want to do a text object called um, text okay yeah so basically what we're going to be doing is we're just going to have a rectangle with text in the middle of it because that's 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 pretty much all a button is is it's re a rectangle with text in the center now the hardest part is getting text to center and i will say from the beginning that my method for centering text does not work 100 percent of the time so you may have to play around with some of the variables and especially i'm not sure if it works on different machines and stuff like that but so you may have to play around with some of the variables so just a little warning on that uh, right off the bat, um, but yeah. So basically, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a default constructor, and then we're gonna create an overloaded constructor. And the overloaded constructor, this is just going to take in the string that you want to set the text to, and it's also going to take in an sf vector to float because we want to set the size of the button. And then I think we want to do one more thing. Uh, oh, we actually want to do two. We want to do two colors. So we want to set. Uh, we're doing SF color. Uh, we want to set the background color, and then we want to do the SF color, um, the text color. So we want to be. We want them to be able to choose both the colors. So. Uh, so yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do text dot set. Set. Oh, whoops! I named them the same thing. I'm changing the T. I was like, what's going on? Dot set string to T. Um, then we're gonna do a button dot set size to the size, and then we're gonna say actually we'll, we'll we'll group it off into so let's say text dot set color to the text color like it's spelled today, and then we also want to do the button dot set color or this is set fill color to the BG color, just like that, okay. Uh, so obviously, if, like I said last time, for the text, um, we need to do a few other things. And actually, we're gonna be doing more stuff in the constructor, but I just wanna take care of the text first. Uh, so we can actually go back into here, and we can just copy the set font thing, because once again, we're going to need to create, just because of how fonts work in SFML, we're going to need to uh, have an external font, which we already do have, because we just need to call this once. Uh, and plus, you don't you don't want to be calling multiple fonts uh, within classes. Anyways, you just want to have one font, and then you want to apply that to a bunch of different classes. It's a lot more efficient to do that. Uh, so you just want to set the font there. Uh, oh, then also we want to do text dot... We're going to set the character size. I can't remember if I allowed... No, I don't think I allowed the user to set the character size. But um, the character size... I'm trying to think here. Um, actually, no, yeah. Let, let, let's set the character size, actually. Uh, int uh, char size. And so we'll just allow them to set... And by them, I mean us, because we're the ones who are going to be using this class, obviously, if like you actually make a game, and no one, no one's going to pay attention to the actual code of it, but yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we're going to come back to the constructor class, but I just want to finish up a few things. Uh, we want them to be able to change the back color and the text color and stuff, So uh, because sometimes people like to have it where you're hovering over a button, and then it changes the back color, and so you need to have a method to do that. So change back color, so say SF color... Color. So we're just going to do here, we're just going to copy this again here, and then we should do that, and then we'll just copy that, and we'll do a set text color, and we'll say 
text color to the color. Um, then we also want to do a void for setting the position. This will take in an SF vector to float for the position, and then we'll just and actually here what we want to do this okay this is where we actually this is where we're going to be um, centering the text on the uh, on the button. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we just we're just gonna be setting the button. So the button is the easiest thing. So we're gonna set the button to the position of you know whatever the user types in. However, we want to make sure that the text follows the button wherever it goes. And how we're gonna do that is we're going to create two variables. We're gonna so just so we can see this better. So we're gonna create a variable called x position and then y position for the text. And our x position variable, okay, try to follow this. This is going to be equal to the position dot x. So the position, just to remind you, this is what the user is typing in. So it's going to be equal, and actually this is all going to be, uh, actually no, this is just a float, so yeah. So it's going to be the position dot x plus the width of the button. So we're going to say button dot get global bounds dot width. So, so yeah, setting it to that and then we're going to divide that by two and then from this quantity here we're going to be subtracting the text dot get global bounds uh, dot with divided by two just like that so that is going to be the x position of the text it's going to be the uh, position that the user typed in the x position plus the width of the button divided by two minus the width of the uh, text divided by two okay and then the um, I believe the y position is just going to be like a copy of that although we're just going to change this to y we're going to change that to height and we're going to change that to height just like that and then get rid of that extra semicolon, and then we're just going to say text dot set position. We're going to set that position into the x position and then the y position, just like that. And so yeah, so that should hopefully center our button. Uh, I haven't actually tried it out on this machine yet, but I think it should do that. I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, so then uh, one of the last things we're going to do is uh, we're going to two more things really. So we're going to do standard draw to method will take in sf render window called window and this is going to window so here we're going to be drawing two things we're going to be drawing first of all the button and actually we, yeah we want to make sure we draw the button first so that way the text is over the button so we're going to draw this, the um so when oh my gosh window dot draw the text just like that okay so yeah this will ensure that the text is over the button and not vice versa uh and then then what we're going to do, the last thing, is we want to have a method that detects if the uh, mouse is hovering over the button, because that's how we're going to do both mouse hover events and mouse click events. We're just going to be implementing it in our main function. Uh, so, yeah, we'll just do void, or no, this is going to be a bool, sorry. Bool is mouse over, and uh, this actually um, needs to take in an SF render window called window which will be apparent why that's the case soon. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to say int the mouse position x is going to be equal to sf mouse um, I'm trying to think here, mouse get position and we want to get the position of the mouse on the window just like that and we're running into an error there, oh right and that's dot x because that is a uh, vector. Um, I think we can make that an int right? Yeah. Or we should probably make that a float actually just because, yeah, okay. And then that's the same what's going to be our mouse Y is going to be that. Um, then we also just want to get our um, button position X and our button position Y and also our uh, the position of the button plus the width and the position of the button plus the height just because we're going to be referencing those variables a lot. So we're going to say float btn pause x is just going to be equal to button dot get position dot x then float btn position y is going to be equal to button dot get position dot y here and then we're going to say float btn I call this btn okay get ready for this pause um, 
I guess BTN X pause width, just so you know that it's the uh, it's the X position of the button plus the width. So I'm trying. I try, I try to figure out how how do I get that in one variable name. But uh, so that's just going to be this plus. And actually, I think we actually we want to do um, get local bounds for all this, not get global bounds. I'm not sure if it actually makes a difference. But uh, it might, and I just don't want to risk doing that. So yeah, we're gonna do get uh, local bounds. Uh, so we're gonna do button dot get local bounds dot width, and then similarly we're gonna say float btn y pause height, and that's gonna be equal to essentially the same thing, except we're gonna be getting the y, and we're going to be getting the height. Okay, so once we have all these variables defined, because the reason that we're defining these is because we're going to be referencing them a lot, don't want to type all this out. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to say, we're going to say, if the mouse x position is less than the btn x pause width, so if the mouse position is to the left of the right end of the button, if you can follow that, and the mouse x position is... Um, trying to think, is greater than the left boundary, and the mouse Y position is going to be uh, less than BTN Y pause height, and the mouse Y position is going to be greater than BTN position Y. So basically, if the mouse is within the button, yeah, that's exactly what it means for the mouse to be over it, then we're going to return true, and if that's not the case, then we're going to return false. Okay. So, after all of this, I think that should be good. So yeah, now we can go ahead and we can implement this. So we're going to include our button class here, and then... We're just going to make a button call. Let's call this BTN1. Okay, and then I sorry, I was just looking at it, I already forgot. So you want to take in string size, character size, and two colors. Okay, fair enough. So as the string will do um, click me. Uh, the size will do how about 200 by 50. Uh, character size we'll do again. Let's do 20 actually. Uh, then for the back color we'll do green, and then for the front color we'll do black. How about that? And okay. Do btn one dot set position. We'll set this to be uh, how about 100 by 200. We'll have it just be. Actually, we'll do it by 300. We'll have it be right under our little. Um, text box here and then we want to go ahead and we want to say btm1 dot draw to the window we want to draw it to the window and uh, so yeah so then all we have to do down here then is we have to have a case that handles this so um, actually I think we want to break after this just to be safe that we don't accidentally run into that uh, we're going to do event um, let me see mouse moved event let's try that do a mouse moved event. We'll do a btn1 dot, or we'll say if btn1 dot is mouse over. Actually, we'll do. Yeah, actually, we'll we'll do this first, I guess. So if it is, so if basically um, is mouse over window because we took in that argument, um, then we'll say btn1 dot set back color. We'll set the back color and this will be SF color how about white. So yeah. So we'll just well, let's run this just to see if we ran into any problems with doing that. Um, oh, it's going to freeze again. Hold on. Okay. My computer is officially unfrozen now. Uh, and I just realized something actually. Um, we need to uh, set it back to being green as soon as the mouse is uh, has left. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to say else. So if it's not over, then we're going to set it back to green just so we, we get that, that full effect. So now if we run this, and we see that our button appears on the screen, and it's uh, right underneath you know our uh, little text box up there. And so if our mouse goes over it, it turns white. And if it leaves it, it goes back to being green, just like that. 
Although I did notice that our text is not showing up, and I think I know why. That's because we did not set the font. So btm one dot set font is going to be Arial, just like that. Um, so then let's see if that fixes that problem. And okay, so yeah, and actually our text centering thing isn't quite working either. Um, so yeah, we may have to, like I said, you you're gonna have to play around with. Um, the way that we're centering this so sometimes I'll just uh, you know I'll change the uh, X like I'll you know divide this by like four or something and I'll try to see like okay does that get me closer does that get me further that gets me closer uh, and you know you kind of kind of kind of got to play around with it and if you really want then you can do it like um, you can have it so that way each button you can set a different offset for it and you can work out some algorithm that tries to center it but basically yeah you have to play around those numbers, but uh, that, that's pretty much all you really need is uh, the click thing. And then, you know, if you want to actually have it uh, click, then you can say, okay, if it is, you know, if the mouse is over, then um, we're going to break here. Uh, and then we're going to do another case for SF event mouse, mouse button pressed. So if the mouse button is pressed and they're over the window, then I don't know. We'll just do we'll just like see out. You clicked the button, just like that. And then if we run this, and then we go here and we click it, then we see that you click the button appears over there. And so yeah, so this is like how you could do a standard um, button. This could be like a play button because this is going to be this is a game development tutorial but obviously this this is like set up to make a game this is like home screen stuff so we're starting with the game on the home screen and then we're going to kind of work our way up from there so uh so yeah that's how you make a text box and a button in sfml c++ like i said you know they're not perfect but uh they're going to work for you know your standard games and uh see so yeah, in the next tutorial uh, i'll be getting t into more actual game content and i'm not sure how long this series is going to go it depends on how long i want to make each video and how many topics i want to cover but uh i expect it'll be somewhat longer. So uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all then, and thanks for watching. Bye.